相手は仮にも今日まで生き延びた極道者くれぐれも気を緩めずに各員の仕事を全うしてほしい Number 10 Blue Eyes White Dragon Jet Yu Gi Oh! Duel Monsters There's wasting your money, there's stroking your ego, there's indulging in your oddly specific dragon fetish, and then there's Kaiba. <laughs> Say what? Who somehow merged it all together, and in doing so, created a custom private jet that's in the shape of his favorite monster card. Not only is this impractical and probably sent him back millions, but not even the most self absorbed member of the 1% has done something this silly. At least in terms of aerodynamics. Hold on, Mokuba! You got it! Let's go! Hate to break it to you, Kaiba. This is your second worst decision since Kaiba Land. Where does he get this stuff? Number 9 Chisei and Elias' relationship. The ancient Magus Bride. We get it, it's Beauty and the Beast. She's had a terrible life, he's the only one to cherish her. They better each other, and through their union, do they overcome their trauma. That being said, it's still a guy with a giant goat skull for a face buying a depressed teenager at an auction with the intention of making her his wife. Of course, when romanticized, it sounds like a gothic fairy tale. But take away the supernatural trimmings, and the result is. Yeah. We don't think anyone would want to be in Chisei's shoes. <laughs> Number 8 Jotaro's Age Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders. In case you need reminding, Jotaro Kujo is 17 years old. <laughs> Yeah, Jotaro Kujo. The walking tank with a chin as large as a fist is a minor. I'm sure this kind of thing gets tossed around all the time in anime, especially when it comes to female characters for, well, worrying reasons, but the most outlandish offender is definitely the bad boy Joestar. Even Araki seemed to acknowledge it as his art style veered towards the fashionable rather than the frighteningly buff. What was this guy eating? <laughs> Number 7 Letting a Little Girl into the Army Saga of Tanya the Evil. Regardless of whether or not they have access to magical weaponry and are basically anime's answer to elsewhere fascists, it's still nuts that someone like Tanya was allowed into the army, not to mention climb the ranks to such a high position. Even if they were adept with spells and highly efficient on the battlefield, you'd think any respectable military body would train them up until they came of age before sending them into a war zone. <laughs> Not here. In this world, you can be on the military payroll at the age of nine. Number six, food gasms. Food wars, Shokugeki no Soma. We all love a bite to eat. We all have that one meal that makes us salivate, and on the rare occasion, might make you go, damn, that's good. <laughs> On the other hand, you're not going to find a dish that is so perfect and so tasty that it brings you to an actual climax. And yet, that's exactly what happens when Soma serves up some food. If he's having a good day, it will bring his female companions to the edge of bliss. When he's on a roll, it literally makes people's clothing explode. Number 5 Kids Defeating an Elite Task Force Higurashi When They Cry Kai There's a lot we have to swallow when navigating through this time shifting horror palooza. Young girls with cleavers, festivals to a murderous psycho god, why the hell Keiji hasn't skipped town yet, etc. But the one that pushed the envelope just a tad too far? <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
Well, seeing a group of young teens, armed with nothing more than bats and a bunch of homemade traps, taking on a full militia of professionally trained killers, and somehow winning. <laughs> We all know Rena has a kill count as high as the sky, but apparently she's got a large supply of plot armor as well. Number four, Tamaki's clothing, Fire Force. A little fan service never hurt anybody, and it can certainly be used as an endearing character trait. That being said, Tamaki's consistent bad luck and the almost predictable way her clothing seems to disappear in every scene she's in has unfortunately gone to the point where every stripped piece of clothing might as well be her character development. So, Simply turning a corner or tripping over is never normal with Tamaki, to the point where you start to wonder if the forces of the universe are actively trying to keep her in the nude. <laughs> Number 3. Letting Children Fight Yakuza – My Hero Academia you wouldn't send a recruit still in training to take on a stronghold filled with regular mafia. So the same applies to one with superpowers. While Deku and Mirio are certainly a cut above the rest with their quirks, the attack on Overhaul's home turf wouldn't be something you'd send a bunch of first-year heroes to. Makes for great shonen action for sure, but for a mission this dangerous, you'd expect something equal to that of when pros took on the League of Villains. <laughs> They've obviously got plenty of top-tier caped crusaders waiting in the wings, like Wash and Mirako. So why weren't they called in? It's a Number 2. Pretty much every sports anime. You know the tropes. No matter how awesome the result is, every sports anime tends to stick to these well-established rules. Nice look. So you. Even when you exclude the times that characters go full-on superhero and display abilities that not even the most dedicated of athletes could unleash, you've still got the cardinal sin of realism. Everyone is a minor. Think about it. The greatest sports stars in the anime scene, barely in their teens, all of whom are performing feats at an Olympic level and make the professionals look like chumps by comparison. Number 1. Card Games on Motorcycles – Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds An entire entertainment industry with enough financial backing and public interest to rival the Super Bowl, all based around a children's card game. It's a stretch, but in some weird way we can kind of see it happening. Playing said card game while also driving a motorcycle at breakneck speed? <laughs> Whoever designed this game was likely obsessed with another kind of speed altogether. <laughs> Even if you could somehow get motorcycles to drive automatically, there's no way the average gamer could balance tactical summons while also trying to deal with going a hundred miles an hour. It's a bloody death trap waiting to happen. <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.